SPSS to determine if a variable, a continuous variable, is normal or not. We're going to go ahead and use the Kolmogorov Smirnoff and the Shapiro's Wilk test. So it goes fast. Let's watch. We're going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore. We'll kick all three of them in there. We're going to go to Plots. Don't use stem and leaf. I normally do the histogram, even though it can be misleading. But here's the main one. Normality plots with tests. Okay, that's going to bring up the Kolmogorov and the Shapiro-Wilk. Click, click, click. And there's our first box. There's the descriptives. And here's the kolmogorov Smirnoff. These first columns, right? One, two, three. These are the KS test, Kolmogorov Shmirnov test. And then the next three, one, two, three, the Shapiro Wilk. Normally they agree, okay? Normally they agree. They don't always agree. So researchers tend to say if you got a big sample size, and they're, they're not real specific on how big, but normally 2,000 or above, the Kolmogorov Shmirnov is more accurate. And if you got a small sample size, again, it's kind of gray area, which was considered a small. Uh, the Shapiro-Wilk is uh, a more accurate. So Shapiro-Wilk normally, I found one book that said, you know, 20 or less for the Shapiro-Wilk. Anything over 20, you should use the Cole Magorov Shmirnoff. But again, like I said, they usually agree. The Cole Magorov Shmirnoff test, it has a a little special thing. Some of these things, it'll, you'll have a little asterisk, and the significance will be 200. Zero, zero. What that means is that the software is calculating that if you had a bigger sample size, then the data set would probably be normal. That's what that means, okay? But these are all less than 0 0.05, which means that anxiety variable violated the assumption of normality, as did depression and stress. In other words, none of these are normal. Remember, when you're checking assumptions, if the if the p-value is less than 0.05, in other words, if you get significance while checking an assumption, that means you violated that assumption. I'll say that again. Students get confused on this a lot. So think about the null hypothesis when checking assumptions, right? The word no or not is in the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis would be these variables did not violate the assumption of normality. That's the null. They did not violate. Okay? So you get to reject that. Right? Because the p-value is less than 0 0.05. You reject the null. Therefore, the null becomes the alternative, which is true. The, the variables did violate the assumption. And again, this is why you don't go by the histograms. Um, that one doesn't look too bad to me but it's not normal, right? And this one looks pretty normal, but according to the, the, the Cole Magorov Shmurnoff and the Shapiro Wilk, none of these are normal, right? So there is depression. Again, it looks pretty normal to me, but not to the math. That's what we got to go by. Now, this one does look skewed, okay? Okay, but that's it. And again, this is your box. Uh, right there. So... Remember, if it viola if it, the significance is less than 0.05, it had violated the assumption. And that's true for all assumptions, not just normality. Last time, if the p-value is less than 0.05 when checking assumptions, that means you violated that assumption. All right, that's enough. MGZ, out. Uh